Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here finally back with round 6 of our F1 22 Haas Road to Glory. Yes, I apologise massively as to why there's been no videos from this series. Of course, been focusing on the My Team stuff. Then I've also had COVID, so just haven't really been feeling very well. And obviously, the My Team stuff has always got to take priority. But today, we're back jumping in to round six of the year from the Hass Road to Glory. Of course, if you missed the last video from Miami, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking it out. But safe to say, this season going pretty well so far. You know, we're doing a lot of hard work behind the scenes to make sure we stay right at the front of the midfield and yeah safe to say it is certainly working for us championship wise currently sixth place there one point behind Fernando Alonso as he heads into his home race there but ahead of Sergio Perez and George Russell in the championship four points behind Alpine as well in the constructors but Mick Schumacher hasn't had the best run of form early on in the campaign but Spain this weekend probably not a track that's going to suit the car the Haas car particularly brilliantly but we'll have to wait and see how we get on nonetheless let's get into qualifying then here for the Spanish Grand Prix Formula One is finally back in 2022 and now you can rep your favorite teams of course using the F1 store every team now has merch lineups available whether you're an Aston Martin fan a Williams fan Mercedes Ferrari Red Bull the choice is completely up to you but yeah check out the F1 merch store down below for all the official releases from all of the teams and of course as always if you use our links as well you massively help support the channel so yeah give it a look and see if there's anything you like Right, we're qualifying day then here from the Spanish Grand Prix and safe to say I remember from the My Team series we had a few issues here during the Spanish GP weekend but I've spent a bit of time trying to fine tune the setup in practice here for the Haas car so I'm just trying to make sure you know of course this thing very very quick down the straight so we can afford to run a little bit more wing on it just to make sure we've got the stability through the corners because I mean most of this lap is all about having some good downforce levels there is you've just got to be really careful around a lot of the curbs on this venue the curb through turn two there's a bit of an undulation as well on the exit you've just got to be really really careful with to be honest a lot of this track now is just about being super sensitive on the throttle in these new cars of course because you're coming out of fairly low speed areas of track and we sort of discovered this as well around a few other venues now that you often don't think about as massively low speed of course because the old cars had so much low end downforce but of course yeah these new 2022 cars absolutely don't as we head through the infamous turn nine they're a bit too much curb that time around definitely a bit more pace to find there as the curbs around here now are brutal as well they really just try and throw the car around there as you can see i was on a lot of actual steering lock as we head out of turn nine but round in the top of the hill then through this final sector car really does seem to dance its way through a lot of these corners just trying to get as close to the sausage curbs as we can through the final turn though up towards the line what is this first lap time gonna be i think we saw charles leclerc on a 17-2 we do an 18-6 then not as fast as i would have wanted but quicker than sight still Right, seven minutes left in the session, and as I originally thought, this track might expose more of the Haas car's weaknesses than we've seen at basically other, any other venue so far this year. You know, Spain and Monaco, two of the most downforce-dependent circuits on the F1 calendar. And yeah, this Haas car, as we've learned, very, very fast down the straights, but lacks a little bit through the corners. But we'll see what we can do. Of course, first lap was pretty tidy, but also pretty safe. So we can afford to take a little bit more risk now we've got the time on the board there. It's completely pinned that time round through turn three. I think that's the first time I've done that on F122. Still now really struggling actually to hit the breaking point at the end of the back straight. You can see we are still in the green, but not by much at the moment. That first lap was a lot better than I originally thought it was. It's just trying to leave the car in fourth gear through there. Try and get our way through the final chicane. Get on the loud pedal nice and early out of the final turn. And we are going to find another couple of tenths then as we get back to the flag. That's going to promote us to P5 ahead of both Red Bulls. Okay, we'll have that. Just following Perez round as we get ready to start our final lap of free practice. The Mexican really swinging the back end round on that Red Bull a rather lot. 
but I don't think, unfortunately. Actually, I thought the Mexican was going to box back into the pit lane, but no, he's just started his last lap then of the session. 40 seconds left on the clock, so at least we've got somewhere to chase, but not ideal as we make the long run back down towards turn one. That second lap was actually very, very competitive, if I do say so myself, so I'll be quite impressed, actually, if we can go quicker on this final run there. It's already losing a bit of time through the first couple of turns, but still very much on the money as we get through the top of the hill. Let's try and roll on the power. That's what you've got to do around this circuit. You've got to be super smooth on the throttle. You know, really rinse it super gently here as I did make a couple of mistakes through this middle sector on my last run. The car's just constantly pushing you out towards that sausage girl on the outside. And if you hit that, it's GG's around this circuit there. It's not the best line through turn 9. That's going to cost us a little bit, but we're still in the green as we head in through sector 3. Just trying to keep it tidy as we head up the hill. You can still see at the moment then about a tenth up there, but we just took a little bit too much speed off as we went through the hairpin. Oh, a little bit wide. It's all starting to unfold. Come on, just keep it clean and tidy through the final couple of turns. I think we've lost it. I think, yeah, we just got a little bit too safe through the final couple of turns that are up towards the line. We're basically going to match our original lap. And it's only P13. Everyone went quicker right at the end. That's gutting. With qualifying finished, it's time to remind ourselves once again of our top three. Sainz, Verstappen and George Russell. With qualifying complete, all that remains now is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. Well, that is a big surprise then at the end of qualifying. Homeboy Carlos Sainz on the pole with Verstappen and Russell P2 and P3 there, but a lot of cars improving late on in the day. You can see there's definitely a big gap between the top six and Esteban Ocon, who puts himself in seventh there. Sonoda, Norris and Alonso round out the top ten. And then myself and Mick Schumacher in an Alfa Romeo sandwich in 11th through 14th. But yeah, really just lacked the pace right when it mattered there at the end of qualifying. But less than three tenths away from the Alpine, we can definitely still score good points today. Let's get into it then here for the Spanish Grand Prix. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 and completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself as well as thousands of others trust Bybit as their crypto. Welcome along then to what promises to be another fascinating Spanish Grand Prix. It's a race which saw Max Verstappen take victory on his first ever appearance with the Red Bull team in 2016, after that dramatic coming together of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Will we see more moments for the scrapbook here today? The Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya then, a high speed 2.89 mile circuit which demands an efficient downforce package and bravery on the part of the driver, especially especially through the blind right of Turn 9, which we might just see taken flat out this weekend. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Perez, Charles Leclerc, and Hamilton, Ocon, Sonoda, Norris, and Fernando Alonso. Bottas, Mick Schumacher, Mr. Monaco, and Joe, Stroll, Gasly, Alex Albon, and Nicholas Latifi. Vettel and Daniel Ricciardo fills the last spot on the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. And with me today, of course, is Natalie Pinkham. 
Let's discuss Red Bull. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within the team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that has definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. After the points finished last race, let's aim to keep that momentum going. Yeah, we've had a pretty good run of form throughout the entirety of this season so far, but let's wait and see what we can muster up today then. There's a very odd strategy being recommended by the team. I think definitely the medium hards is going to be the way to go here. Don't really want to use the soft tyres here at Barcelona. But yeah, ready then, 33 laps ahead of us. Always a bit of a marathon, the Spanish GP, especially as it's often not a track that I particularly enjoy either. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see as to how we get on today. Weirdly though, Mick has taken the gamble on a set of softs, so he's going to hopefully get a lightning start, but might struggle longer term down in this race. We'll wait and see. I've got to try and make sure we get a nice bit of heat into the rubber. Of course, such a long run down to turn one here. It's a bit comparable to Mexico. Oh, dearie me. I mean, it was going to happen again, wasn't it? I've got about three days without doing it, so of course it was going to happen again. But getting ready then to line up on the grid, ready for the Spanish Grand Prix. Oh, no. Oh, no. How many places are we going to lose by turn one then, people? Let me know down in the comments below. That is not what we wanted. At the start of the Spanish Grand Prix, five red lights, though. And it is going to be lights out. And away we go. And actually... Oh, look at that. We've actually done decently. As we head down towards the first corner, they're slipping immediately between my teammate and Valtteri Bottas. I knew Alonso was going to try and cover me off there down at turn one as one of the Mercedes, George Russell, almost gets turned around. But we have jumped our teammate, Mick Schumacher, then off the start of the Grand Prix there. As where's Lando Norris going? Oh, he's completely rejoined in front of Valtteri Bottas there. So suddenly, out of nowhere, we're up into the points at the start of this Grand Prix. But look at Sonoda. Yuki Sonoda up to about P4 there. Off the start. Fantastic getaway by the young Japanese driver who's going side by side with Sergio Perez. Is Lando Norris now. Feels like he's got some decent pace in that McLaren car today. But definitely did not get the first couple of corners that he really wanted. There is look at this from Sonoda. He's, well, I mean, he's letting the top three absolutely romp away at the start here. But fair play to Yuki for getting his elbows out, even against the sister team of Red Bull. As we head down the back straightaway there, I think now he's probably going to go a little bit backwards as he's got Perez. Yeah, both Mercs still trying to light up a move at any opportunity. And then we got both Alpines, as I did not realise Norris was up the inside there. So now Bottas and Lando going to be able to sneak back up the inside as we're, everyone's trying to get their elbows out. We're not going to back out on this one just yet. As, you know, Valtteri Bottas, you can always go for a move on him. But Carlos Sainz then leads the way at the end of lap one after a crazy start. Here in Barcelona, Verstappen and Charles Leclerc already in a bit of no man's land in P2 and P3. And then, yeah, just this huge train of cars there as Perez has made the move work. I've only just noticed as well, Lando Norris actually is on a set of soft compound tyres here. So no wonder he felt like he had a bit more pace to show early on and tried to get the elbows out with me. Because he's got to try and be rapid early on in this race. McLaren haven't had a very good start to the year, if I remember correctly, in the Haas RTG. But Alpine certainly haven't. Currently, they're sat, exclude Yuki Tsunoda and all his heroics, as best of the midfield there, as Yuki's let, I think, Hamilton by. And now he's still got George Russell at bay, so I think they're all just slowly picking him off, one by one. Oh, there goes Mick Schumacher on Bottas just behind us, as I think Tsunoda is about to get jumped as well, just in front. There are so many battles going on early on here at Spain. Really nice to see the new regs allowing a track that has often delivered quite a lot of snooze fests to finally start delivering the goods. We're still just sat behind Lando, though. We're sitting quite pretty at the moment in P11. Just watching things unfold around me as we look after the tyres, but if mix quick, it might be worth letting him through. See if he can go on a bit of a rampage. Here we go. There's Mick Schumacher pulling alongside me. How has our teammate found that much straight line speed? As we head back down towards turn one. Oh, ah, come on, Mick. If you're going to make the move, you've got to just try and line yourself up through the corner nicely. Oh, Bottas now up the inside. Goes the flying fin there. We're going to try and do the old up and under on him, but Bottas aware of it. Going to go this way and that, trying to make a work, move work back on the flying fin there. But Valtteri Bottas 
Oh, now I'm at a P12, and we've lost two places in as many corners. That was not great. But, got to keep our head down still. There's a long way to go here at Barcelona, and we've got good pace in the car. We don't need to panic. So oh, then going to try and get a run back on Bottas. So we head back down towards Cell 1. I'm going to use a lot of battery, though. Whoa, to the inside of the Finn, who tries to move around in the braking zone. Not a fan of that one, so we kind of had to send it in the end on Valtteri Bottas. I mean, it was a clean move, but got a little bit sketchy there. As now, look at this. Alpines and Lando Norris, three wide at the top of the hill there. I think Lando Norris, yeah, was always a bit opportunistic to try and get in that one. It's giving Yuki Tsunoda a little bit of breathing room up the road, but Spain is delivering today. I'm here for it. Oh, here goes Mick then on Lando Norris, the back of the two soft compound tire runners in this GP. Are they going to trip each other over? Can't be long before they pit. No, Lando will hold on for now. Yeah, I reckon they're probably going to box. Whoa! About lap 8, lap 9 there as we get very, very loose and lively out through turn 3, but we all live to fight another day. Still really just trying to look after the tyres as best as possible early on in this Grand Prix. So are we going to see Lando and Mick in? No, we're not. So this should be about where we start to see the crossover on the tyres. But Mick Schumacher, every time out of that final corner, is absolutely rapid there. As we have got a couple of cars in then. So Charles Leclerc has now boxed onto a set of hard tyres. That would explain how he was able to get away from Verstappen so quickly as well earlier on in the GP. But he's now stuck behind both Alfa Romeos here. So he could be in for a wall of hurt over the next couple of laps there. As one of the McLarens must be Daniel Ricciardo in as well in this GP. So we just see Mick Schumacher rocking around a little bit as he tries to get on the loud pedal. But it can't be long before Lando and Mick are in. And we're probably going to try and extend this into about lap 15. There we go. Lando and Mick in then at the end of the very next lap there. So that's going to mean we're a little way behind the Alpines that have suddenly decided to battle. But we have still got the DRS to defend ourselves from Bottas, at least on this lap. So Ocon and Sonoda now, not quite side by side, back into turn one. But Sonoda definitely starting to go backwards here. We need to try and get within the one second zone and close up to those Alpines. He hasn't taken us long then before we're inside the range of Yuki Sonoda, who seems to be struggling to try and match the pace of the Alpines. Don't even think he's got the DRS anymore. really wish I could make Mark louder on the radio, but yeah, now all over the back of Yuki. I'm going to desperately try and push my way past on this lap. May as well wait for the DRS zone, because the Alpines aren't exactly getting away from me. I feel like we've got really good pace still. I might try and just go one lap longer than a lot of the AI, see if we can go for an overcut. This could be moment of truth time then between myself and Yuki Sonoda or Charles Leclerc. Going to get a whole lot closer as well as we head out of the final corner. We drop back behind Yuki ever so slightly, but we need to try and get past him here as the team want us into the end of this one. I'm going to try and go one lap longer, but are we going to have enough to get a look up the inside of Yuki Sonoda? It's brave, it's aggressive. It was a proper K-Mag style move there. Charles Leclerc has gone past him as well there, and that is yeah, one of the most aggressive moves they have ever made on F1 22 there. Just didn't think Yuki would go as defensive as he did, but knew we had to make it happen then. As we've lost a little bit to Esteban Ocon up the road, but yeah, now we've got Charles Leclerc right behind me, so he's probably going to fly past me on the run out of turn nine. Just, yeah, just maybe took a little bit too much out of the tyres, trying to make that dream a reality back down at turn one. Charles, you cannot go for it there, mate. That was beyond stupid, especially when you consider there's a DRS zone here. So Charles Leclerc will have to wait for another chance. I think yeah, he's just struggling a little bit because Sainz is absolutely dominating this race up to now. But yeah, we're going to stay out one lap longer then in this Grand Prix. Will it be Alonso? Will it be Ocon that dives in at the end of this lap? And how many other cars are going to box as well? I think it's Alonso that's made the call. No, both Alpines stay out another one then, so clearly I'm not as brave on the tyres as I thought I was. But we are going to box the end of this one, as here comes Charles Leclerc then. Don't really want to battle him all too much, as Ferrari gaining, gaining, gaining. He's not going to be close enough. He's not going to... Yes, he is. He's going to try it. Oh, and there's contact. Not, not a fan of that one from Charles Leclerc, to be honest. We'll give him the place in the end, because I tried to kind of get back over to where you meant to rejoin there. 
We definitely lost time for it though. Off on now. Four seconds up the road. That was not helpful. And then into the pits we come at the end of this one. Are we going to see either Alpine in now? Yes, Fernando Alonso is in. So we've got to make sure we get inside the bollard. And then try and get the car slowed down nice and tidily into the pit lane there. We weren't as brave as we could have been on the way in. You can see Yuki Tsunoda in his Alpha Tari all over my gearbox. But we need to make sure we get our pit box nailed. So there we go. Purple on the way in. Are we going to get a nice clean tidy stop though? Okay, we had an issue attaching the left rear wheel. I know it's not ideal. But let's try and put that behind. Go! And get back into this Why aren't we going? <laughs> oh no. Why does it keep okay, happening to me? And all those cars were slightly quicker than here. We're now going to try and navigate. And we're on cold rubber again. So, of course, the car, we're going to lose another good two seconds on this lap alone. Whoa! Yeah, this that's that's not fun. I always forget just how undrivable this game is when you go onto a new set of tyres. We've got to stay ahead of Pierre Gasly. But, yeah, just so annoying. We keep getting tire uh, pit stop issues like that. And then, like I said, you know, the AI just don't get the cold tire effect like you do. So you always lose even more time. Down to P15 then in this Grand Prix. Now we've got a long afternoon. Now that lap, when all the damage is done, we've lost a good six seconds. More than that even. Of course, so I knew. There's a couple of seconds behind me there. That's probably been about ten seconds through the tire wear warm-up. And, of course, the pit stop blunder by the team. Oh, I mean, this game's fun, but that just happens too often in my eyes. I guess, really, our only hope now in the second half of this race is try to recover all the time we can. But, yeah, Nick, 11 seconds up the road. He's currently the man in the final points paying position. Just going to have to keep pushing. Seb first up the road and then monitor the gap for the cars in the front. But, I mean, we were all so evenly paced early on. Can't help but feel it's going to be a tall order. Well, we're hitting some pretty clean, tidy laps at the moment. The gap to Sebastian Vettel has definitely started going the right way there. We've broken away from Pierre Gasly as well, just behind. But Zhou Guan Yu, oh, there we go. Sebastian Vettel going slowly then. I think there we go, an engine failure for the Aston Martin, man. We were just about to make the overtake, but that might explain why we were gaining so much then on Sebastian Vettel. Out of the Spanish Grand Prix there and we could have really done with a safety car at this point of the day but I don't think we're going to get one unfortunately. Joe Guan Yu, six seconds still up the road but he's now nestled in the DRS of Yuki Tsunoda so that's going to be a difficult mountain to climb as again we get loose and lively at the top of the hill there but poor old Sebastian Vettel out now of the Spanish Grand Prix. Well, eight laps to go then here from Barcelona and so frustrating to go because we are taking decent time. At uh, Azul Guan Yu and Yuki Tsunoda just up the road, but I mean, we're so evenly balanced with all of those cars throughout the entirety of the event that as soon as you lose five, six seconds, it's near impossible to try and get it back then. You can see we've definitely had the pace over the likes of Gasly and Stroll behind us. That's been a weird okay, race of sort of ahead. two halves five, in the midfield. Five seconds. But yeah, we just don't quite have enough. I don't think to try and get back to those guys and certainly won't have enough to get back into the points unless a miracle comes our way. It's heartbreaking because it is going to end what has been a brilliant little point streak at the start of the year. And perhaps we shouldn't have come back to the Haas Road to Glory. Perhaps we should have left it in its happy little space. But yeah, it's, it's gutting. But I always knew this track was going to be tough. It's just a shame because we definitely have the pace for points. Right, three laps to go then here from Spain. And Carlos Sanchez reminding everyone he is still leading this race out comfortably at the front of the field. There, another new fastest lap by the Spaniard. But yeah, certainly hasn't helped us the fact the engine is slowly packing in as well. I think the turbo's well over 60%. And I'm pretty certain the ICE isn't far behind it here. So, I mean, if, if we'd have fresh components, then maybe we would have stood a bit of a better chance trying to close up to the cars in front. But yeah, we got the gap down to about five and a half seconds to Zhou Guan Yu in front. And it's basically just stayed there ever since now. So he's just getting dragged along by Sonoda in the DRS. Gap to the cars behind is still going up, but it is just fractionally every single lap at the moment. But yeah, it's a disappointing race, but we've just got to see it through to the chequered flag. And about to start then the final lap here of the Spanish Grand Prix. Like I said, been a not the most welcome return to the Hasro to Glory today. Feel like we had decent pace 
and you certainly aren't going to get what we deserve out of this weekend. Should have had the pace to at least try and get up. You know, we should have been around Mick Schumacher and Esteban Ocon here, but that's the way Formula 1 goes sometimes. An issue with the wheel gun is certainly something we've seen Haas lose more over with that issue in the past. But Carlos Sainz fast as laps. He rounds the final corner. He's going to be victorious here at his home Grand Prix. And finally, the Spaniard wins on home soil for not only himself, but also for Ferrari there. Charles Leclerc's just going to hang on to P2 ahead of Max Verstappen there with, I think it's going to be Lewis Hamilton and George Russell fourth and fifth there. Sergio Perez down in P6. Not far away, actually. Fernando Alonso, best of the rest, if I'm not mistaken in 7th place for Alpine there, so both Spaniards pretty much doing as best as they could have hoped for this weekend. Ocon, Mick, and then Valtteri Bottas is going to round out the top 10 there. And yeah, just a disappointing day for ourselves when all is said and done. We're not far away from the points come the chequered flag, and when you consider all the time loss we had through, you know, the cold rubber and the wheel gun issue, we definitely... Should have been right there on the money once again. But always knew this was going to be a tough race for us nonetheless. Through the final corners, up towards the line, is P14 at the Spanish Grand Prix. And the point streak sadly comes to an end. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. A real team effort then, which has paid off in spades. A great victory here at the Spanish Grand Prix. So Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving, nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team strategies. They got all those things right today and the results speak for themselves. it again an excellent performance at today's Grand Prix and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there Let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Our championship leader is still sat at the top of the standings, but their rivals have made up some solid ground today. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Well, my driver of the day has to be Charles Leclerc. He was unstoppable out on track today, weaving through the competition with ease. Let's move on to the constructors. Ferrari continue to extend the gap at the top of the table. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, there we are then, guys, the end of the Spanish Grand Prix, and Carlos signs back on top for the first time in a little while then. He comes through to win the Spanish GP there. Charles Leclerc ahead of Max Verstappen with George Russell, Hamilton, Perez, Alonso, Ocon, Schumacher, and Bottas rounding out of the top ten when all is said and done. And yeah, just Sebastian Vettel who didn't make it through to the chequered flag there. Gutty, yeah, I think, yeah, losing a place as well during the Grand Prix shows how much we struggled today. But at least Mick Schumacher kept the Haas points alive there. Championship-wise, does mean Charles Leclerc still on top there, but just 15 points now. The gap comes down. Carlos Sainz now into P2 ahead of Max Verstappen. And Alonso still hanging on ahead of Perez there in fifth place. We get relegated down to seventh as both Perez and Russell make good gains this weekend. Zhou Guan Yu, though, still rocking it in ninth place, of course, after his win back at Imola there. A few other movers, Bottas jumps Albon, Sonoda, and then Esteban, sorry, Bottas jumps Albon and Sonoda, Ocon jumps Sebastian Vettel as well. There is Daniel Ricciardo still last overall in the Constructors' Championship with just a solidary point. And Constructors-wise, though, still McLaren at the bottom of the pack there. Ferrari now with a 56-point lead, though, over Red Bull, who extend the gap slightly ahead of Mercedes this weekend. The Alpine further increase their lead over ourselves now. The gap 
12 points between us with Haas, uh, sorry, with us, of course, Haas in P5. Alfa Romeo, five points back then in sick then of Alfa Tauri, Williams, Aston Martin and McLaren. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed and we'll return very, very soon for the jewel in the Formula 1 crown. We'll be back ready for the Monaco Grand Prix. You guys do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.